Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you with a lot of Infinite Warfare news. Going to be talking about the Infinite Warfare campaign quite a lot in this video. Gameplay you're seeing right now is Black Ops 3 and I'm using the crossbow with the bayonet attachment and tri-bolt to do a little bit of weapon scavenging. Not how I normally run this, but still a fun way to do it. So as you may know, I had the opportunity to go to Infinity Ward and sit down and do some things there. And part of it was a huge, huge presentation on campaign and gameplay and that sort of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and drop all the relevant info on you. Campaign is designed to be mostly boots on the ground. In their story fiction, you wear magnetic boots or suction boots, boots depending on the level, that basically keep you grounded. So when you're on the moon or when you're on Titan or Europa or whatever, which obviously have less gravity, if you jump, you're not super jumping, you're not flying away, you do get pulled back to the ground relatively quickly, and it feels like normal Call of Duty. However, some of these levels do have climbing or grappling, especially the lower gravity ones, as you'll need to move from platform to platform, but the base gameplay is designed for boots on the ground. That's not multiplayer again, that's single player. I did get a little bit more information about the weapons. Some of the weapons are hybrids, not just in function, but in ammunition types. I talked about in a previous video the assault rifle, sniper rifle combo that you can swap back and forth and one-shot people with the sniper and then spray with the AR. Uh, watching it again more closely, I was able to see that the magazines have both energy, like battery packs, and real bullets in it. So the sniper rifle shooting big fat like uh, 50 caliber bullets or whatever however the assault rifle part is just spraying energy at people so you're loading different types of ammo in, into your magazine and then into the gun so it does very interesting things and the energy weapons are a lot less gimmicky this time around than they were in advanced warfare um, advanced warfare used a similar thing with hit scans but they decided to add these big bright like shining like laser animations to them and stuff energy this time around is almost always blue and it functions almost exactly like a regular gun. So it's the same hit scan, the same recoil, the same damage profile, penetration, all that sort of stuff, except instead of getting the normal tracer rounds, it's blue and it has a slightly different noise. So the energy weapons basically feel like regular guns with maybe a skin put on them. Campaign is composed of a main story, but also has a lot of side missions. We've talked about this, we knew this, but I do have some more intel on it. It's kind of described as a hybrid of Black Ops 2 strike missions and choose your own story type of uh, style of campaign. Some of the missions you choose are paths, like left, right, yes, no, air, ground, what do you want to hit sort of thing, and it changes the story slightly, or at least how you reach the end destination. Some of the missions are bonus missions designed to give rewards to the player, as it is currently, and this could change, mind you, I think the asteroid mission is designed to give you some sort of resource reward, and the rewards can be that other levels are easier, or you get some kind of upgrades to your campaign stuff, they weren't really clear about that. Some give rewards, and a few of these are just for story. There's a few missions that don't really give significant rewards, but are there so that you can explore the in-game universe or get a little bit more story out of it, and I was also told that some missions have consequences, like sometimes there is a wrong choice you can make, or depending on the mission you choose, maybe one character will die or a, a plot point will change or just something will change. Not all missions are purely reward based, some have negative consequences and you can load in and pick missions from your spaceship kind of like you do from the safe house in Black Ops 3 or it really reminded me a lot for those of you that have played StarCraft 3, not the expansion packs but just the original with Raynor, how you pick the missions from your nav map and the ship or whatever, kind of like that. Uh, big variety of levels, we talked about it in other videos but it takes place on Earth, on the surface of some of the giant spaceships on the moon, Mars, Europa, uh, Titan, and several asteroids. Maybe some more. I, I I can't imagine that's all of it if we're doing space. I'm really hoping for Pluto, honestly. Pluto would be really funny. You're still a planet in my book. There are several dogfighting levels, again, that you've seen these before, but I did get a lot more information about how the dogfighting or spaceship combat actually works. You are free to fly the spaceship and not on rails, and you do take damage from crashing into things. It's not baby's first spaceship. If you bonk into objects, if you hit people, if you crash, you will crash and you will die. So please do keep that in mind. Don't try to just fly through things and imagine it's like the Invincible Jeeps from other Call of Duty games. And it does have full 3D movement, a lot like Eve Valkyrie or other space dogfighting games. Go upside down, go in a loop-de-loop, -loop, uh, rotate, do all sorts of crazy stuff, full-on 3D movement. However, you are bound by a certain battlefield or zone. You can't, like, fly off behind the planet or the moon or anything like that. You're kind of stuck in your dogfighting area, but you have complete free movement in that. And the ships have side thrusters, so you can strafe a little bit. They put this in here to make it a little bit easier to aim, 
game and to feel a little bit more like the boots on the ground soldier because so, so that you can do like sidestepping or strafing and not just like bombing runs or bombing passes and the way the lock-on missiles work in the current build anyway is that you have to lock onto an enemy fire the missile and then you have to keep the enemy in your line of sights and kind of laze them or tag them the whole time the homing missile is chasing them so it'll work like you lock on and fire they get the notification and they try to fly away and dodge you and you have to chase them and track them until it hits them and blows up and kills them Story-wise, the SDF are designed to be very, very clearly bad guys. White and black, red and blue, no gray area. In my head, I always kind of thought of it like Firefly, that the settlement defense front really just wants to defend the settlement from the evil capital, and that they were like the rebels, and they just wanted to live in peace and not be told what to do. And as much as I want that to be the case, that is not the case. They decided to make very, very clearly defined good and bad characters. And the SDF is kind of like space ISIS, or space Nazis, maybe. The ends for them always justify the means and their whole uh, system is built around a cult of personality around their leader they're very big into authoritarianism survivalism that their lives do matter more than the lives of earthlings or other colonists and that whatever they can do to win the war inflict terror or win is completely justified in their eyes so they do a bunch of terrible terrible things right off the bat in the first campaign level they're like uh, killing civilians blowing them up with missiles and grenades and rockets and setting them on fire and doing all sorts of bad things like that and as we talked about in previous missiles at in previous missiles previous videos as an act of terrorism they'll hit uh, asteroids with missiles and send them flinging into the sun with people on it so they're like throwing people into the sun which I think is a pretty bad thing to do aesthetically speaking the game is grungy space and not pristine beautiful space it's kind of like the the as the developer described it diesel blood and dirt is what they wanted they wanted the really grungy rundown uh, dirty sort of space. They wanted to feel real and grimy. I did see a presentation on the game saying that the story was focused on a grounded war story and it was not a sci-fi story, it was not a space story, and that the idea is that the story was about consequences and uh, leadership and things like that. However, it looked pretty damn sci-fi to me. I mean, there was a big part of the presentation about how it was not a sci-fi story and how it was a, you know, any, any scenario war story. Maybe it's my bias, but it looked about as sci-fi as it could possibly get. I mean, maybe just because I couldn't see the real war story behind the giant spaceships or the dogfighting or the lasers or the robots or anything, but it was quite sci-fi. As sci-fi as that is, it is based around human beings and current technology. Uh, we said, we got a presentation, there are no aliens whatsoever. Not even like little easter egg aliens, not like little uh, bonus life on other planets. We're just doing no aliens. There is no time travel in this fiction. It's not going to be like Star Trek bouncing around past, forward, future. And there's going to be no sentient AI with existential issues. Now, you do have some semi-sentient AI. You've got Ethan, who is your robot homie on your team. You've got bad robots to fight and, like, compute, like, ship AI and stuff like that. But not like the evil genius mastermind AI that controls drones and hacks the world or whatever. Nothing like that. It's all human technology. And that is all the information I have for you as plainly and as clearly as I can deliver it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.